So this is the 2017 chemical equilibrium question. And if you look at the question overall, we see it's a pretty standard question covering pretty much everything you will have covered in chemical equilibria. Starting off with the three core equilibria definitions, and then looking at setting up an expression for the equilibrium constant, and then using this expression to work out the equilibrium concentrations, and then looking at the effect of temperature or concentration on the equilibrium, looking at Le Chatelier's principle in practice. So let's start off. <clears throat> so the first part is really the core definitions about chemical equilibria. So this is something that you should really have um, nailed down um, if you're thinking about this question. So chemical equilibrium is where the concentrations of reactants and products in a chemical reaction are constant. So the whole idea of chemical equilibrium is that we have a forward reaction and a reverse reaction. So reactants are reacting, reacting to form products, products are reverting back to reactants. So these two reactions are ongoing continuously, but because of the rate of the forward reaction and the reverse reaction are the same, the actual concentrations don't change. So we have reached a state of chemical equilibrium. It's called dynamic because even though the forward and even though the concentrations aren't changing, the forward and reverse reactions are still happening. So there is a lot of movement going on, but the actual concentrations don't change because as reactants form to form products, at the same time some products are reverting back to form reactants. So it's this dynamic um, nature of this reaction um, un underlying the fact that the concentrations aren't changing. And Le Chatelier's principle says that when we um, are at a state of equilibrium, if we disturb that state in some way, the system will try and shift so as to restore the equilibrium. So if we apply some external change in temperature or pressure or concentration to change the equilibrium, the equilibrium will shift so as to oppose that change. So some sort of succinct and formal ways of stating this are, are, are given here along with the marking schemes. Okay, so the second uh, question part B is really just asking you to write the equilibrium constant, Kc, for the reaction. So the equilibrium constant generally we can say is the concentration of products divided by the concentration of reactants, taking into account the number of moles of each. So in our reaction, our products is uh, um, NO2. So we have NO2 squared because there's two of them, divided by our reactants N2O4. So that's a pretty easy six marks. Now we want to look at calculating equilibrium concentrations. So when we're calculating equilibrium concentrations, we what's happening is that we added initially some amount of material into our reaction flask. And as the, as the reaction proceeds, some of those reactants will go and form products. Some will stay as reactants. So we'll have a a, um, an equilibrium between reactants and products. So we want to know what those equilibrium concentrations would be. So we can make up what's called a ICE table, initial change equilibrium table, and um, say that while well, the initial concentrations were um, the amount of substances that we added to the flask. So it says here one mole of dinitrogen tetroxide was added to a fixed 10 litre flask. So if we've got one mole in 10 litres, that means we have 0.1 mole in one litre. So that gives us a concentration of 0.1 molar or 0.1 mole per litre. So our initial concentration of N2O4 is 0.1 molar. We can assume that at the start, before this reaction proceeds, the concentration of our products is zero. So how will these change as the reaction proceeds? Well, if we look at the balanced equation, we can see that for every amount that N2O4 decreases by, the balanced equation tells us that NO2 is going to increase by two times that amount. So we can call those amounts x, and we can say this will be a change of minus x, this will be an increase of plus of 2x. So therefore, the equilibrium concentrations, the things we're interested in, are 0.1 minus x, and 2x. So now we know these equilibrium concentrations, we can use these in our expression for Kc that we generated in part b 
So we can say that the concentration of NO2 is 2x. We square that according to our equilibrium expression. Concentration of N2O4 is 0.1 minus x. And we're told in the question that this is equal to 0.2. We're told Kc is equal to 0.2. That means then we need to solve for x. So we can solve for x by cross-multiplying, writing out our um, expression. So we've got 2x all squared times 1 is 4x squared. 0.1 minus x times 0.2 is 0.02 minus 0.2x. So we can rearrange this equation for this quadratic expression to give us 4x squared plus 0.2x minus 0.02 is equal to 0. That gives us another 3 marks. So we have a quadratic expression and we can solve for x using the formula minus b plus and minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a where a is 4, b is 0.2 and c is minus 0.02. So if I plug in these numbers we see here I get uh, um, this. So we've got b squared, so 0.2 squared is 0 0.04, minus 4ac is minus 4 times 4 times minus 0 0.02, so that's going to give me plus 0.32 over 2a, so 2 times 4 is 8. So I'm left with this um, uh, expression after getting rid of the square root, and this will give me two answers. Only one of these answers will be positive, so a concentration must be a positive value, so we take the positive value, so this gives us x as 0 0.05 molar. If you go back to our ICU table, we can see, well, the equilibrium concentration of N2O4 with 0 0.1, mo 0 0.1 minus x, so that gives me um, that concentration of 0 0.05 molar. Our concentration of NO2 at equilibrium was 2x, that gives me 0.1 molar. So we're asked to calculate the equilibrium concentration in moles per litre of each of these gases at this temperature. Uh, so there are the answers there. Finally then we're asked a little bit about um, applying Le Chatelier. So we have a um, our equilibrium and we're told that the reactants are colourless and the products are dark brown. And we're told that as we reduce the temperature, okay, so when we go from zero from our temperature T to zero degrees, where T is greater than zero, so we've reduced the temperature, the mixture gets paler. So that means we can say the opposite. If we increase the temperature, the mixture would favor the forward reaction. The mixture would get darker. So we have an equilibrium where increasing the temperature favors the forward reaction. Remembering that a Chatelier shifts to oppose the disturbances, we can say then that the system must be endothermic. If we are increasing the temperature and the system shifts towards the products to try and, and, and uh, that means that that direction must be trying to cool down the temperature to oppose the change that we've applied by increasing the temperature. So therefore, um, the reaction must be endothermic. The forward reaction must be um, um, and taking in heat. This useful graphic from Compound Interest website goes through the various conditions of looking at a Chatelier's principle. You see here um, some details about the change in temperature. And then finally, part E, would there be a change in value of Kc if we had a different temperature? So the whole point of an equilibrium constant is that it is constant. It is a constant at a given temperature. So therefore, at that temperature, there will be no change in Kc if we change the initial concentration. Okay, so you need to read this question carefully. Of course, if we added in extra amounts of either reactants and products, the equilibrium would shift. Kc will still be the same. The equilibrium constant will still be the same at constant temperature.